Okay, hi. Hi. I'm Maria Lebecki, and I'm an intuitive coach. I help people with relationships, big life changes, and overall higher consciousness. And this is Natalie. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie. I'm a life coach, and I'm a therapist. Um, I love working with different techniques that are going to help you to achieve your life goals. Um, I do theta healing, a lot of, you know, energy and conscious healing to work with angels, love our angels that are always around us. So um, I'm very happy to be here again with Victoria and, you know, having a great conversation about things that are important. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about relationships and uh, mostly because that seems to be a theme for a lot of people these days and a lot of the issues that are coming up, especially during quarantine, are the relationships that we're kind of stuck in, right? Some of us might be stuck in a certain dynamic that we don't like. Um, some of us might be aware of certain relationships that might not be the healthiest now that we have to spend time together more and other things like that. So. Um, I, I really just want to start out by saying um, our relationships are a reflection of who we are. And so when we attract certain people in our lives, that is a reflection of who we are and what we're magnetizing. Um, and that's evident in a lot of different dynamics, whether it's, um, you know, a love relationship or friendships. Um, you're going to start seeing certain patterns and certain things reflected back to you. And Natalie, you, you know a lot about that too, about how re re certain dynamics and relationships really do reflect back who you are. Definitely. All the relationships, good and bad, are a, re a reflection of something that you have inside or that you need to work on that is still inside you. Um, so, you know, right now this time has been great to really get to know yourself better and relationships are a way to show you that. Um, during this, this time where we're locked down and we're spending much more time changing things, first of all, us as a person, we are, us, you know, individuals have um, had to deal with a lot of changes and things that are, are gonna bring out things from inside that we're not aware. But then we're not just by ourselves. Probably there's, you know, we're living with someone or we're with, you know, with friends and everyone is dealing with the same thing. So a lot of things start to show a little more obvious that probably before it wasn't. And this is something good. In general, it's something good. It can be something hard sometimes, but it is good. It is good because it gives us the opportunity to understand what we are what we truly are the good and the the things we judge as bad because honestly maybe they're not bad they're just emotions that we are having and they're okay to have in their relationships you know they show that usually um when we see or have problems in a relationship whatever type of relationship it is it's a great opportunity to reflect why is the action of someone making me feel that way or why am I, you know, being hurt by this, hurt by this person. But honestly, you are giving that person the power to hurt you or to um, get into you. So when you find something that you don't like in someone, it's the best time for you to ask, why is that bothering me? What is re that reflecting of myself that is creating that sort of um, reaction? Um, so I think it's a, it's a great time to work on that. And um, you cannot change anyone. You, you're not gonna change anyone, but you can change yourself. And that is gonna create a huge change in the way your relationships are forms once you're aware and you change yourself, you know, through love and through self-love, especially, because that's the only way you can really express and give love is by loving yourself first. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, it's really interesting because I was even talking to someone earlier today about their relationship at home and a shift that was made. Um, and it's such a beautiful shift to make because it's, it, it was from more of a reactive response, like not even responding, because responding is, has more consciousness and awareness to it. It was more like knee jerk reacting. I was approached with anger. I'm gonna re reply with anger without even thinking about it, right? So the shift was, okay, what you did was full of anger and that's not okay with me anymore. So if you'd like to express an issue that you have with me, we can talk about it like adults. Let me know when you're ready for that. And then just walked away. And like, how much more freedom is that? And how much more healing is that in that dynamic? And what does that say about the person I was speaking to earlier today and the shift that that person made? That in, is, yeah. In, in just like who they are and the growth that they've made. Definitely. It's, it's, a, it's great. I love it because the only thing you can do in a relationship, um, first of all, is you can listen and you need to, it's okay if, if someone is important to you, give them the time to express themselves always in a respectful way. You don't have to, you know, accept, you know, something that is disrespectful. Uh, you don't have to because you love that person. You don't have to accept that. You can do something like, like you said, you know, and say, I'm not going to accept that right now. And you also, but what you have to do first is to, you know, evaluate your actions, you know, have I been, you know, listening? Have, have, have I been, you know, having expectations? Have I, been, you know, just been reacting? You know, there's a reaction and another reaction and, you know, suddenly nobody's just doing nothing but reacting. Uh, so just take the time you know, and have that person communicate and then don't give, you know, the person is going to have the power to get to you how much you give the power to them. And it's okay. It's great to have a relationship in where, you know, you let go of fears or, you know, just having to be walled up because somebody might hurt you because that's not helpful. But then, you also have to learn to put boundaries. And the boundaries are just, first of all, understanding where is all of this coming from, you know? And there are two big components. First of all, every person is a unique individual. They have ideas, they have beliefs, they have experiences, they have expectations, and everyone is unique. And that is okay, that is acceptable, you know? And you have your own set of, all those things too so it's hard to get all those two together and yours is not more important than the other one yeah. definitely not all are equal and important but you need to be aware of what you want and then decide okay this person might be having this reaction and might not even have anything to do with you or they have been a lot of reasons that you're unaware of probably even the person is unaware of so first of all you know we don't need to start taking things personally. You know, we need to understand that they are there. That doesn't mean we need to accept everything. You know, we have to put our boundaries, but we can't, we don't need to have that affect us because if it, we let that affect us, we're gonna have a reaction and then it's gonna just grow and grow and grow. So you can just listen to the, that person, try to always, you know, when I'm having a crisis with someone or I'm upset about something, you know, the first thing I do is, you know, I take a deep breath and say, please allow me to perceive that person from a loving perspective. And a loving perspective is a perspective that doesn't judge. It doesn't have to accept everything because they say it, but it just, it's not judging. It's just watching like you watch someone, like a little kid that's been hurt saying stuff that they don't mean, you know? So once you shift that perspective and get to visualize that, that person as someone that is struggling and is having that reaction, and then you calm yourself and you can react in a healthier way, and then it can lead to a healthier response. 
And of course, if you're a person that just keeps trying to, you know, and doesn't want to see things different, you can also say, okay, well, that person still needs to work a little bit more. And this is not, you know, bringing anything positive in my life. And you don't need to keep interacting with that person if it's not something positive in your life. You have the right and you should be doing something like that because, you know, you're not here to save everyone's lives and be the savior of the world because you're not. You're here to love yourself and, you know, spread love. Um, but you also need to respect, you know, what, whichever process other people are going through that you're unaware of. And you cannot push someone to see things your way and you cannot force someone to do something, you know, they don't want. So that, That's huge because there's, I'm myself included, there's a lot of people who are in a relationship, whether it's a friendship or a, a partner of some sort, marriage, whatever, that you're in it and you see the good in the person and that's all you want to pay attention to and you hope that that good increases, right? You hope that that is what they choose to be. You also see negative behaviors, right? You might have a friend that talks down to you. You might have a friend that cracks a joke at your expense and you're like, oh, okay, but they're really like awesome otherwise. They're a lot of fun to be around. And maybe that's just what I'm gonna pay attention to. That's what I wanna see. And it's like, okay, but if they're doing things that are literally tearing you down and they're doing things that are unhealthy for you, they might be a good person. They might have good intentions. But if they're not doing the things that they need to do for themselves to grow, and maybe perhaps you are someone that wants to grow and is seeking to improve themselves and is doing the work and, and, um, and making the shifts that need to take place, if there's a friend that you're really close with or a relationship that you're in where the partner's not doing the same thing, you, it's time to reevaluate that relationship because honestly, even if you see they're good and even if they have the potential, you can never expect someone to achieve their potential. You're gonna be sitting, twiddling your thumbs and it could be the end of your life and you realize, oh my gosh, what did I do with my life? I, you know, this has been my best friend my whole life and they just tore me down and I didn't get to be who I wanted to be because I was constantly worried about cleaning up their messes or helping them with their drama. It's like, that's not a healthy thing to do. Um, oftentimes that comes up for us though, when it has to do with our own self-worth, like, oh, I'm never going to find like another partner or another spouse or another uh, relationship um, that is better than this or another friendship that that is going to add more value and and it's so interesting because there is a dynamic there's a law in the universe and don't I just know from experience that if you allow the people that are not growing with you to fall away because there is this natural like divergence that happens if you just continue on that direction it might mean changing your residence, changing your roommate, changing, you know, your life partner. It might mean these things. Other people begin to show up for you in ways that you could have never imagined. And like you said, Natalie, I love how you mentioned your angels. We have angels, we have guides. However, whatever it is your belief system is, we are interdimensional beings. There are inner, inner, inner dimensions that are interacting with ours. Um, quantum physics has proven this, okay? So, you I mean, it, it's just the, the reality that we live in. And we are guided and we are incredibly blessed if we make that choice. People will show up to support you before you make that choice, while you make that choice, whether it's in the form of a book that you read, whether it's in the form of a friend that reaches out to you for the first time in five years. This stuff is happening for so many people and, and clients that I'm talking to. There's people reaching out that haven't reached out in five years. Mm -hmm. I know someone personally that is leaving a marriage and suddenly all of the friends of the opposite sex who, have, who they haven't talked to in years are reaching out all of a sudden. Hey, how are you doing? I mean, you can't make this, this stuff happens. 
but it does require a leap of faith first. And it, and that comes from a self value of self worth. Yeah, definitely. I think there are very important, you know, aspects that you mentioned. First of all, when you're evolving and you're growing as a person and you're changing, there are a lot of friends that probably won't agree to that change or won't understand that change. And there are going to be times that they're, you know, why are you saying, you know, doing that or, you know, you don't like, you know, they're going to try to influence because there's a certain dynamic. Maybe they get something from you, you know, maybe, you know, there are your friends, you know, who you went, you know, partying or there were, there were stuff that they had from you. And then when you start evolving or changing, you know, maybe you had this interest and now it's a different interest, you know, they're going to kind of try and get you back to where they had you. So first of all, I think that true loving relationships are relationships that are going to be supportful and understand and love you for who you are. And we're not the same person from yesterday to today. And we're not going to be the same person in 10 years. I mean, we hope not because then it would be (laughs) really (laughs) weird, you know, so that change, we need to embrace it. And we need friends that and family and, you know, partners that embrace that change with us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you're grow, there are going to be things that you might seem to lose, but then, you know, we need to change that perspective that it's not a loss. It's just, a change. And as you say, amazing things are going to happen. If you start focusing on, you know, what do I want in my whole relationship? How do I want my friends to be? What do I want a friendship to be and feel like? What do I want my relationship with, you know, my parents, my siblings, my husband to be like? Because a lot of time we're just acting out of patterns that we we've learned since we were little and before probably. So, you know, we have this thing about how this relationship should be. And then we get stuck on that because we think that is normal and we're comfortable, you know, reliving and recreating those relationships. And some of them might not be bringing anything positive to our life. So if we don't, first of all, we need to be aware that there's a pattern of certain relationships that are not good. Why, you know, all my friends always betray me. You know, or why do my friends always, you know, trash talk me in the back? Why do, I don't know, whatever it is that's going on. Or why do I, you know, if you're in a, you know, um, loving relationship or, you know, then, oh, you know, my partners, they're always, you know, they always cheat on me or they always, they have this pattern, you know, and I always see, they always do the same. No, I mean, how many people are in the world? You know, we don't do the same. No one does the same. But why are you attracting those patterns? What is that? What do you need to work on to change that? So we need to be aware of that. There are a lot of things that come into play, you know, experiences with our own relationships, the things we've learned. So, so many things that we could work. But first of all, we need to be aware. Okay, this is a pattern. This is coming and one time after another. Okay, what is that causing me? Why am I not freeing myself from this and once you decide to really work in yourself it can be a process there are sometimes you know patterns that are really deep inside that come from you know relationship with our parents or stuff like that that our relationships are are very strong and very important and really determine a lot of beliefs that we're going to have but that doesn't mean that we need to stick to those beliefs you know, those beliefs, you have had them for whatever, 30, 40 years, yeah. that's okay. That doesn't mean the next 40 years you want to have them and, and that can change them. Absolutely. And that's where you come in. And that's what I help people yeah. with do from a coaching perspective, right? Because we need other people in our lives. We need that perspective. We need the guidance. I know, you know, for, through several life changes that I went through, I relied on other people, people who had the lives that I admired, people who had the situations that I wanted to go into. Um, and that's important to look for in someone who you're going to be going to for advice. 
Um, and it's yeah. friends are great too, but make sure when you go into someone, these are people who have been through something similar or are professionals in, of some, in some capacity to be able to help you know what the next steps are because they can look back and retrace those steps that they've been through or that they've helped other people go through and, and, and tell you what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Because a lot of friends are gonna have opinions, a lot of family members are gonna have opinions, um, and that's very different. So being very conscious and mindful of who you surround yourself with, even in the, in, in the time of transition like that, yeah. is huge, and intuition. And, kind of and having, having like a mentor, you yeah. know, like, like you said, someone that really knows, because a lot of people have the best intentions, but then also they have feelings and they have experience and they have fears and they have stuff. So find someone that can really, like you said, has had that experience that has knowledge on how to do it. And there are a lot of people out there that can really guide and be a mentor, but to have a good mentor is definitely a key. And, you know, to be humble, to accept others' opinions also, you, you know, to, Think, okay does that, this resonate with me does that make sense to me because it, you know if you have a mentor it does mean you have to do absolutely everything what he or she recommends no but you can take whatever is best knowing intuitively you know going inside you know talking you know to God to your angels to the universe whatever you want to call it or whatever your beliefs are and just process it yourself and take what you need um, I think that is a key and that you're able to bring into your life what you want. You know, like you said, um, I've been through an experience before, you know, I was married before and then I had this amazing person that was a mentor, you know, therapist in Guatemala, amazing uh, person that helped me a lot. Um, and through that process, you know, through time, I started to know myself better to work, you know, through things patterns and then I truly got to attract to my life the kind of relationship and talking about you know um, a partner relationship with you know who's my husband now with everything that I was looking for and looking consciously not because it was a pattern or it was you know feeling a need or it was no because that was really what I knew you know I wanted to to experience and, you know, in very magical ways, you know, that came to my life, you know, I was in Guatemala, he was in the United States, and everything gathered together, and, you know, here we are, um, and I'm, you know, really having and to experience that amazing relationship, and I'm, and I can tell exactly that there is a breaking point in my life when I truly started, you know, working with this person that was a mentor for me. And that really gave me the tools and the things that I needed to make that life-changing, you know, experience and to really drastically change all the things in my life from where I was to where I am right now. And I even, you know, like I wrote it down, what do I expect from my relationship, from a person that I would have, want to have a relationship very detailed you know because a lot of times we don't, we're not even aware oh I like that I don't like that and you know so you need to really and you can do that with any sort of relationship what do I really want you know my friends to be like what do I want to have a relationship with my mom with my dad with you know my son my my daughter you can work on that but you need to know what you want how you want it and you know okay so this person is not you know these friends are not bringing the best and eventually a lot of times they're just gonna you know like interests are gonna be a part and then they'll just that you don't have to fight with them or just cut them out of your life they're just the interests are gonna be different and they're, they're gonna be you know like getting a little away and you know more people are gonna come you know into your life that bring something similar you know like how we met a lot of synchronicities and things that, you know, from people that have similar energy, you know, so, um, and that is who suddenly you're going to be surrounded by. 
Yeah, it's just kind of, it does require a leap of faith though. And it does require, and even if before you take that leap of faith, surrounding yourself with a couple of great people, whether it is a therapist, a counselor, a, a coach, a mentor, whoever it is, having someone who's kind of, um, who's more of a guide for you as opposed to like a friend with opinions, right? That's huge. And yes, the right people do show up for you. I mean, gosh, the fact that we know each other is incredible to me. And the fact that, you know, it's just like you just meet someone and you're like, wow, this was meant to be. Um, and there is, there's just so much magic that starts happening when you begin to find your own strength and begin to make choices and set boundaries with other people yeah. based on your sense of self-worth, your value. Yeah. Um, and, and I love what you said earlier about love. That is love. Stepping up in front of someone who is mistreating you and yeah. saying, you know what? That's not going to work for me anymore. When you'd like to talk like adults, we can try again. Let me know when you're ready to talk calmly and patiently with me. Um, you know, just, just that, that is love. That's clarity. And love, I think that you touched up important subject. Love, a lot of times, is taught us, you know, love accepts and, you know, everything. Right. And, you know, then we come to these situations where, you know, family violence and stuff, and, oh, but, you know, I love him, and, you're, I, you know, he's going to change, or situations like that because we have a false image of what love is you know and yes love definitely means loving yourself mm -hmm. and that also requires putting boundaries it does mean okay you know I'm gonna do something to that person it means okay knowing that person is troubled that person needs to grow that person needs to do a lot of stuff it's suffering a lot if you're having violent reactions if you are having your inside you're not fulfilled you know you're not fulfilled so that person is going through a lot of stuff and you know love is looking at them okay they're going through a lot of stuff it does mean i have to accept them harming my life no because i would be not loving yourself and you have to love yourself to love someone else so First of all, you know, boundaries important. You know, there's certain things that you just don't want around and it's okay to just take them out. It doesn't mean, okay, I'm gonna do, you know, fight back, or I'm gonna do, you know, you can just put healthy boundaries, loving boundaries. And sometimes the loving thing to do is to keep someone away. Yes. And sometimes the loving thing to do, because a lot of times we also have patterns of relationship where we're like, um, I don't know what the word is, the crouch of the person, you know, like we're helping them if they have some sort of problem and we're contributing to that. Enabling. Yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, we're in, in enabling their things and we're preventing them and we're, you know, not letting them grow because we are taking responsibilities that are not ours, or we are uh, accepting things that are not good, right. and we are justifying stuff that is not good, and we're, you know, we're not letting that person deal with certain consequences of actions, or, you know, go through certain experiences that might, might be, you know, judged as negative, because, you know, we love them and we don't want them to suffer, but sometimes, you know, Loving also means allowing everyone to grow and allowing everyone to be responsible of the consequences of whatever actions they are doing. Because if you are taking responsibility out of them, you're not helping them. That is not love. Yes. Yeah, I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Even parents with children like that, I mean, if the ones that um, are the most attentive and aware, they sometimes allow their kids to experience the consequences of the choices that they had made. Yeah. Parents that constantly bail out their children, I mean, you could just look at studies. 
They, they don't understand consequences yeah. in their adult life and they, yeah. what do they achieve? You know, you can just kind of see the patterns. Yeah. So it's, it's all around. I mean, the more we enable anyone else with anything, I mean, the more we're just feeding into that behavior and it doesn't help them and it's not love. Yeah. It's so, or for them. Yeah. So, you know, right now I think it's a good time to everyone that's watching and ourselves to think about what am I, how am I loving someone wrongly? Because love is not always what we think. So in a relationship, how are, is my behavior, you know, contributing to something that is negative of that person? And that could be taking away responsibility. Because sometimes people need to hear cer certain stuff that maybe they don't want to hear. And that is love too. You know, you don't need to scream it at them or have it. That is love too, you know? So we have this wrong perception of love. So love sometimes it's hard and sometimes takes hard decisions and sometimes the l most loving thing to do in a relationship is walk away not always obviously but a lot of times you yeah. know so each relationship is unique each re relationship has challenges and good and bad so um if there's a relationship that it's really bothering you you know, it's really, you know, really think about, okay, I love that person. How am I contributing to that person's growth? Am I just holding them also, even if it's, you know, because of love? Right. Um, and that, I think a lot of people um, have those patterns and they're really hard, first of all, to see because you really think, oh no, you know, I'm doing it because, you know, I love them and, you know, that's too much for them or, you know, how can you decide that's too much for them? Exactly. Exactly. One of my favorite people in the world, Helena Summer, she, her quote in all of her emails is, my love is unconditional, but my presence is not. Exactly. I love that. Right. Yeah. Correct. And I think also, like, if you have a you have someone that you really care about and even you know and you're stuck in the relationship and even if it's someone that you really don't care about but you know someone you work with or whatever that has a toxic relationship it's always always helpful to just have you know when you're meditating or you're saying your prayers or whatever just take a time and send them love change that energy to something positive and a lot of things I'm promising you that are going to change, yeah. you know, um, and you just, you know, send love to the relationship, to the process and things are going to change because you're changing the energy. And sometimes, you know, we are humans. A lot of times are pushed to think that we need to like physically do something to change something, you yeah. know, like, okay, if I'm, if I want to stop something, I'm going to go out with, you know, my signs and I'm going to, or what, but a lot of times, you know, that just creates more hate energy or just creates another reaction, you know, over the reaction. And then a lot of energy that you don't want to surround you. So if you just go and change that energy inside of yourself and really, you know, try and see that person through love, it doesn't mean you have to like and accept them, but just try and change that energy and that that itself would will start to shift things to a better place whatever that place might be absolutely um you know our thoughts about a person and the and the emotions that we tie to those thoughts either curses or blesses them instantaneously yeah. and that's again that's quantum entanglement that is through the quantum field and as we evolve and you and i talked about this in our other videos as as the consciousness and, and, and our awareness of humanity evolves we are becoming more and more aware of the fact that it is this quantum field that's around us that is primary and so it is our our, our thoughts and and the emotions that we have when we think about a person that literally blesses or curses them. And that is our prayer. What we think about, what we focus on. Not, yeah. A prayer. Definitely. 
And another thing that is very important in every relationship is forgiveness. A lot of times we don't truly forgive someone who we perceive hurt us. And one way to really start forgiving someone is acknowledging that they are doing the best they can with the tools that they got. They're acting the best they can with whatever they learned, they went through. It's nothing to do with you. Because if you don't, for, if you don't forgive, you are the one that's carrying that negative energy and that, you know. So it doesn't matter if the, whatever the person thinks of you by what you think of the person. So I really encourage everyone to really work on forgiveness. Forgiveness is a key to growing. Mm -hmm. And we have, everyone has a lot of things to forgive, um, whether we are aware of not or not. But if we got hurt because we interpreted something as something harmful and we felt the pain, you know, a lot of times we resent that. And forgiving is, is just magical, you know. And even your brain, there's this, you know, when, when you measure your brain waves, yeah. and you are truly able to forgive a situation, your brain waves change. And there is a great, you know, tool that you can measure it. You, you start just visualizing and forgiving, just visualizing that person and forgiving and, you know, repeating and visualizing and visualizing. And there's going to be a point where that is just going to be released and your body physically is going to change. Yes. And there are ways to measure that. Yes. So, you know, forgive your, you know, things that your parents did. Forgive things that, you know, your teachers, your friends, your, you know, people who you had relationship with, everyone. You know, just if you take a day, you know, a minute, you know, a few minutes a day to for, constantly say that you forgive and forgive and forgive and you heal that within yourself. You don't have to be calling anyone. Oh, you know, I forgive you. And they probably know you, you were fighting or anything. It doesn't have to do with that. It has to be with inside forgiving and just releasing that because it creates like patches in your life, you know, energetically that doesn't allow you to, to flow. And if it's something within a relationship, it's going to have a tendency to repeat itself if you don't forgive. So. Yeah. Forgiveness is, I think, crucial for your present relationships, and whether it has not, nothing to do with your present relationships. It, it all, forgiveness doesn't happen in the past. It doesn't yeah. happen in the future if you think someone's about to do something. It happens here and now. Eckhart totally talks about this in The Power of Now and what forgiveness really is. Yeah. But uh, to put it really simply, it, it, like you said, it's here and now. It's not... Yeah. You don't even need to go to the past or go to the story right. about it. You just sit, tune into that person right now and yeah. purely accept them for who they are as a purely human being as well as a divine being at the same time. And in a work because our, our, we're not more than just humans on this earth. Yeah. So just accepting them for who they are, where they are on their journey. That's it. And, and forgiving ourselves too. That, yeah. That is, I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. That is the most, I think the key of all forgiveness is forgiving yourself um, and not carrying guilt. Guilt won't take you ever, anywhere. It takes away whatever. You don't need to feel guilty about anything. You need to take responsibility of the things that you did, which is very different. And that's learning and that's changing and that's evolving. And that, you know, if there are consequences to something, you know, accept them, learn from that, and grow from them. Yeah. Guilt, oh, I did that again. Oh, 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 you know, that is just hard. That's no, no, nothing positive. So you, whatever decisions you made, whatever things you did that you don't like, you were doing the best that you could. Probably yeah. you wouldn't do the same right now because you have more tools, you have evolved, you're different right now. But when you did it, you had to do it because that's the best you could do. And that is okay. You learned a lot. So be thankful for any mistakes that you believe you made because those mistakes are going to help you grow. 
and they're going to help you evolve and they're going to help you get closer to achieving happiness and wholeness if you really accept it and you know take them as, ex as learning experiences because at the end that's what life is a whole bunch of learning experiences that we decide to put a good or bad but they're learning experiences and whether they're painful or not painful they're going to make us grow and a lot of times painful experiences are going to make us grow faster than experiences that are not that painful there's more energy in in pain sometimes and I love, I love that because um, Donnie Epstein says, Dr. Donnie Epstein, he says that it's not about like the patterns that you have, it's about what you're practicing now. So again, bringing it back to this present moment and who you are right here, right now, not who you've been in the past, the, the mistakes that you've repeatedly made. Who am I right now? What, what vision of myself do I have in the future that I want to attract me to become? And then, and that, that, yeah, that is nice too that you mentioned that because when we're talking about having a mentor or someone to help you, a lot of times when we're stuck, we have the same group of person around us, they already have a picture of who we are and they expect something and, oh no, but you don't like that. Oh no, but that's not something that you do, but you know, but when you bring someone that's a little bit from the outside that doesn't really have this image of what you're supposed to be or what you're supposed to like or to not like and you just let that person see you with a different light and you can be that different light that you probably need to be and empower yourself to acknowledge that you're a everyday changing being and that that is okay you know that's going to help a lot so um i think the power of now is also when we bring someone from the outside that doesn't have any expectation. Oh, you know, if it was the people know you and then they give you advice based on what they think you would like or would like. So it is really good to have someone that just has no, you know, expectation of what you are. I have to say the friends that I'm closest with right now have seen me like people who I haven't talked to since January because there was a lot of life changes in my life since then and it's what it's May now They probably wouldn't even recognize me right now They probably are responding to if they did see me they they'll be responding to an idea of me that they have in the past The friends that I have with me right now my closest friends They they accept me and the shifts that I'm making and the changes that I'm making and they support me in that and they see me in my highest self and they talk to me in my highest self and they call me out on my bullshit, right? Correct. The ones that don't yeah. enable me. They're like, you know what? You need to we think about this a little bit differently. <laughs> we need those people in our lives that, you know, come on and say like, okay, that is, you know, you need to someone to tell that and that is loving too. Yes. Um, and sometimes we don't perceive that as loving and we feel like threatened because we don't like hearing those things about ourselves and we're like, oh no, we're being, you know, and then we, if we just let our ego react, we're going to have a defensive negative reaction. We don't want that. So um, definitely I'm loving what you're saying and I think um, it's embracing that, you know, having new people and, you know, they're going to be friends, they're going to come and go, you know, and be a part, maybe just for periods in your life, and that's okay. They were there from, you know, they feel something that you needed or they complimented something that you needed at that time, but that doesn't mean that, you know, that's what you need right now. Exactly. And honestly, there's a lot of gratitude that I have, even for people who have hurt me in the past. I think grat pairing gratitude with forgiveness has been yes. huge me because I wouldn't be where I am without them today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Being thankful for everyone that presents themselves in our life, even if they, you know, it's a good or bad right. experience right? Good or painful experience, you know, it's growth. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people say that the greatest teachers are the ones that, you know, hurt you the most or the one you struggle the most with. So, um, yeah, gratefulness and forgiveness, I think, are key right now. Absolutely. Where we're talking. 
Well, awesome. So I, I don't know if there's anything else you want to you wanna say here. I think we've, we've did some really no, good. I think, you know, we could go on for a long time with this, uh, you know, so many things that, you know, embrace a relationship and so many, uh, but I think that is uh, great if you're listening to us and you're having, you know, difficulties in a relationship, take the time to look inside and what are you bringing to that? What is that telling you from yourself? And just reflect on that and try to really take the judgment away from what, whatever the relationship is from the person and from yourself and just try to, you know, accept what is going on from your, from your side, work on what you need and, you know, look at the other person with love and determine if it's something that's healthy for you or if it's not. And if it's not, it is okay mm -hmm. to push people away or just don't have them around you. That is okay. If you need to do that, you deserve to do it and you're worth it and you do it. Go ahead. And, and the right people to help you and guide you will show up. Yes. Will show up for you. Yeah. So that's what's so We can help in any way. You know how to find us. So yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be in the comments, in the YouTube video itself. Um, I know we share this all over Facebook and a lot of our other groups um, in the Victorious Life Collective group on Facebook that I have. I know you're starting a group, so we'll link that in the comments of the YouTube video as soon as that comes up. Um, and so we really look forward to meeting with anyone who would like to reach out to us. And um, yeah, this was a lot of fun and we'll do more videos like this. And let us know if you have any questions about any specific topics too. Perfect. And like and subscribe as well, of course. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye.